Hello and welcome back to another advanced Open Huang Lessons. This is the third one. I'm going to be talking about the move a lot of players don't necessarily like about Huang. Both Huang players and not Huang players. I'm talking about the Hell Sweep, RFS down 4 3. So, before we even address RFS down 4 3, we gotta understand Right Flamingo. His stance. What is Right Flamingo for Huang? So, in Tekken 7, Right Flamingo was a lot of big mix up really. So, obviously, the first one that's pretty obvious is as soon as you do, let's say, down 3 4, you're plus 14. Uh, your opponent can't press anything anymore at this point. Uh, so that means you can hit them with a 50-50 in the RFS back 3. The nerfed 50-50, mind you. RFS back 3, negative 10 launcher. Or you can hit them with the Hell Sweep, which is launch, punishable, and block. However, if it does go in, uh, typically, you'll get the knockdown into the Oki, which usually involves crouch dashing or transitioning to either Flamingo or just dashing in, really. That's okay. That's fine. And then if you get the launcher, my goodness, did your opponent uh, pay the price for it because it hurts a ton. Wow, 78 damage. I Before, it wasn't that high, but Horang did get a safe launch off RFSD4 back in Season 1. They changed that in Season 2. The other 50-50 is RFSF4. Now, this was technically a 50-50 prior to Season 4 because uh, the OS for this was a basic down 4. So if your opponent character did not have a basic down 4, they really had to eat this mix-up because the most they could do is like a down jab. Of course, that's like the basic option. That's not diving into like deep what their actual anti-option is for RF RFS F4. So how this mix-up worked prior to Season 4 was essentially making the opponent second guess and then hit them with the RFS EF4. And if they remain standing, you can transfer that to RFS2 or hit them with the Hell Sweep. Now with, you know, Air Blade or the Twaha from Beck Dosan in, in Season 4, uh, you deny the OS, which was basic down 4 after RFS F4. Now, they're really forced to block a high mid 50-50 uh, mix. And the best thing you can do here as the opponent is like jab, but even then, like if they catch the jab, that's going to turn into a counter hit launch. And just like, what do you call this? <laughs> just like uh, RFS back 3, this hurts a ton. Like this is... The combo typically that's gonna happen. Wow, that's 82. Yeah, that was a bad idea. You might as well have just like taken the hell sweep, right? 31 damage into Oki. Or sometimes just let them enter another mix up. But then again, that means you're gonna hit another down 3 4, another 50 50, and then they can either transfer it to another situation where they can do another 50 50, right? Or they can just always hit you hard with the 50 50. So that's 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 RFM. You can transfer your 50-50s into small mix-ups and you can go big into like these two big 50-50s from down 3-4, LFS 3-4, RFF 2-4, RFF 4, RFF DF 4. Yeah, you get the point. <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, there when you do the move, there are specific timings. So if you follow the timing, you put in like record action for let's say down 3 4 RFS back 3, down 3 4 into Hell Sweep. There is a specific timing there where you can fuzzy both options. So if you learn the fuzzy for that, you're pretty much safe. So at that point, it's like, what the Huang, what's the Huang supposed to do? They can't risk the RFS back 3 anymore at that point, right? Because that means they're giving up a negative 10. So they can change it into plus 1 just to stay safe on the RFS DE4. And then like play around the situation after that. Or they can take advantage of it and go into plus five. And then maybe chip you with another down three four and then do it again. And then pretty much just give up on the 50-50 because it's just not gonna go in. So they're playing essentially without it, which is a big deal because they can't hit you hard anymore or punish you hard for it. And if they're unable to catch your timings afterwards when they change theirs, you're getting you're starting to see where the problem lies. And let's say if you're the, as an opponent, you're challenging on down 3 4 on the timing specifically when they're trying to change the timing on the 50 50, it gets even harder <laughs> for Huang. So it's just like, okay, I can't really know when they're doing the thing, so I'm gonna like stay extremely safe at that point. So then the main strength of RFS disappears. 
they're only going to the other thing, which is like trying to create into another small mix-up. Now, on paper, that would sound good because you're sound, literally looking like Steve Fox now, right? You get a small mix-up, then you put yourself back into an advantage where you can chip them again. Unfortunately, Horang would need maybe one or two, maybe even up to three times where he gets a big 50 -50 to really affect your opponent's mental. Not unless you're so good at just using the small mix-up, then that's, that's your Horang. You're very good at that point. You're looking like uh, your master, uh, Beck Dosan at that, you know? Because Beck was really good at that. Canceling and mixing up the opponent's head with small mix-ups and multiple cancels. So if, if you can't get the 50, yeah, and then it's just like, it's the only low you have. That's another thing. The only low that's fast enough to punish an opponent for standing against RFS. Because the Snake Edge does not count. The Snake Edge, for all intents and purposes, is only used for punishing a player who's going to challenge you with a jab or a high. So basically, it's reserved for high crushing only. Or if your opponent's mental is really lagging behind in the match, then this is gonna hit. And even if it hits, right? Let's say the damage you're getting for it, the damage you're getting for this, it's not, is it high? 56, close enough to 60. So you're punishing your opponent decently uh, for it, but compared to RFS back three and R counter hit RFS F44, I don't think so. So now let's go, let's go to the, like how to use it, right? So that's the problem of the hell sweep, being it your only low to punish them. And like if they can cover it the fuzzy, it's hard to catch on changing of timings. It's hard to catch if the opponent challenges. Most especially if the defense is airtight. How do you use RFS down 4-3 then, right? Because some players will straight up give up on it. And just play again with like, again, so it's 50-50 and small mix-ups, right? You can continue pressure with like RFS 2 mainly. Or you just stay super safe, RFS DF4 plus 1. And then like negative 2 RFS 1, right? In reality, this may come out as... A surprise to a few is that every time you do get a 50-50, you actually don't need to punish your opponent hard for it. So it's just like, oh, okay, so that means the Horangs who were giving up on the Hell Sweep were right to like not use it and like always go with like those three options, right? Or use that opportunity to stand switch down 3-4, get a small poke again. Yes and no. No, because they've ignored the move completely. It does not do them any good anymore for, to ignore the move. Because if your opponent challenges there straight up, or like, they're not gonna duck against RFS, and if they catch your timing on the stand switch, and believe me, I've played players who are very good against Huang at this level, and they catch the down 3-4 stand switch on hit. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to punish you for like, standing up. And now I can't because I'm gonna have to go here. And that plus five, they can step, they can backdash, they can challenge. And he's like, okay. And then it gets worse if I do plus one. Of course, if it goes hit plus eight, great, because you can like JFSR down T4, mix them up. That's another big 50 50. And that's like the best options you can do after RFD4. So if you're ignoring the Hell Sweep completely, that's a big no no. Because you lost the opportunity to punish them for standing up just because you're so afraid of like the defensive aspect of it and like the huge risk reward because the risk is you getting launched for like 70 damage and losing out on neutral the reward is mediocre at best or yeah it's mediocre at best 31 damage into Oki that may not necessarily be in your favor so as I was saying mentioning earlier you don't have to hit them all the time punish them all the time for it the magic number is honestly a range from one to three. This is the amount of times you may need to hit the opponent with the hell sweep. And I can say that with experience in, in with total confidence at high level. You only need one hell sweep sometimes. Because what you want the hell sweep to operate as for Horang is a deterrent. You want it to actively remind them that there is a threat that exists in right flamingo if they don't duck on the first instance and that's like again the first instance when you get something to hit is the only time horang is like guaranteed to hit them hard because the moment you extend your pressure 
the more they can get out. Most especially if the other moves you do don't hit and they're only on block. Now it's like, okay, how can I make them second guess if I only need to hit them one or three times? How do I do that? Well, it's like with the other Huangs already figured out by ignoring the move. You're gonna go to option number two of the 50-50 stance. Well, I actually wouldn't even consider it option number two. I would consider it 1A and 1B. It's another way of connecting the 50-50. Because Huang's 50-50s, honestly, were never about knockdown. They're not like Kazuya, wherein you're doing a hell sweep into FF3. Or like, wave a wave instant while standing 2, wave a wave instant, like, while standing 1 plus 2, stuff like that. No. Huang, for the most part, likes to mix you up and likes to poke you down. So, wait. Let's say wave a wave down 3 4, RFS 2, stutter step down 3 4, stutter step 2, RFF D 4, chop, check, you're checking the opponent. And then if that hits, check again, double check, super safe. Now, once you have the guy that you've gathered the information on that, like they're standing up, you're gonna punish them for it. Down 3 4. And then you wanna punch them hard for standing up. Boom, hit him with a hell sweep. Now, you play around the same situation again. You get the RFS2, it connects. You check this. Now they're gonna think that the RFS1 is gonna come out, right? Because that's what you've been doing all day, every day. Then you punish them for standing up. Oh wait, wrong thing. <laughs> Don't punish them for standing up, because obviously they're looking for a mid, right? Because they're expecting RFS1. So you hit them with the hell sweep again. And, and every hell sweep or every big low, for the most part, has a huge mental frame advantage. Every time someone gets hit by it. Not unless they're like, they have really strong mental defense to like just straight up ignore it. And that's a completely different story. Again, yeah, you'd have to tailor your offense for the player you're playing. But in general, you hit them with like that, let's say two sequences like that. Then that's when RFS back three is going to punch them big. And at that point, you don't even need to get a lot of RFS back threes also. So you see where I'm getting at. While it is a 50-50 stance, it doesn't have to be a 50-50 stance that punishes them hard. You only need to punish them hard a couple of times. Again, you just have to, it, you want it to actively work as a deterrent. One to three times. So again, this hits once. You can just straight up abuse the fact that they're looking for the low. Or like, take advantage that they're looking for the low. I say, I say down 3-4, right? In this 50-50, they're looking for it. So you want to check them for if they're, they're ducking, right? And actively what we want to make our rfs more is more of like mix-ups and safer we want to make it as safe as possible while getting as much reward as possible so you hit them with rfs d4 let's say it hits all right you got plus eight force crouch then you can jfsr and that's a solid check now they're gonna get reminded again that's a huge threat if they get hit by rfs d4 so let's say they start blocking rfs d4 right so then now you start branching out two different situations so it's not just about the hell sweep anymore. But it's learning how to use the hell sweep in situations that involve RFS to create other situations. Now, I'm pretty sure other Huang players already know that. But again, it's difficult to do. Because it's just like, yeah, it exists, but they're not caring about the other situation. I risk this, I could potentially lose. Correct. And sometimes that's just the game you have to play. So to expound on like, the threat of the hell sweep. The situations that you're gonna be mainly focusing on beside it are obviously RFS2, RFS1, RFS DF4, and LFS down 3 4. Those are the four moves that are gonna be connected to RFS down 4 3. Not unless you wanna replace, let's say, uh, stand switch down 3 4 with, like, let's say, stand switch down back 4. Again, take your pick. Any of the lows in left Flamingo, and those are like the main lows you'll be using. Now, unless you're gonna put the foot down as well in Flamingo, then that means you get RFF down four, which is a big deal, and down back four, and down back three. But essentially, it's like, again, you can see it one high, two mids, and whatever low you're going to use. And it's like how to make sure the ghost of the Hell Suite exists for your opponent. Again, a lot of the advanced stuff are always gonna sound vague. They put the foot down. How is this a threat? The opponent can just challenge it straight up, blah, blah, blah. On paper, that's how it's gonna look. It looks bad. But of course, when it looks good on paper, it's just like, how do you get to that, right? And it's just like, okay, 
what happens to your opponent's adjustment? Tournament, deathmatch, blah, blah, blah. How come if there's, if there's no time, there's no room to adjust? What happens if you have a lot of time to adjust? How do you build that up from step A to step B? And then now it's just like, how do I make a move exist as a threat for another thing? Yes, it's all the mental stuff. It's hard to figure out. But if you want to continue to progress with the character, it's something you have to figure out. Again, that has been the, the lesson for today. Uh, again, as always, there's going to be one of the videos, the end screen stuff. It's going to be on the other side of the screen. So feel free to click on that for the next advanced open Hoang lesson.